Cape Chronicle, I'm Jacob McClellan. Southeast Missouri State University's Faulkner Center recently acquired several new items that once belonged to the writer, including his typewriter and some handwritten correspondence. I'm joined now by Chris Rieger. He's the Faulkner Center's director. Chris, thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having me. Well, first, let's talk about this pocket watch that, that once belonged to William Faulkner. Uh, could, could, you show, could you show this to us and kind of tell us, a, tell us a little bit about this? Yes, I brought the watch with me here today, and this was Faulkner's pocket watch. He kept it on his boat uh, outside of Oxford on Sardis Lake. And on the back, which we won't be able to see on camera, but he has scratched with some sort of sharp instrument his name and the words Ring Dove, which was the name of his boat. So this was a prized possession of L.D. Brodsky, Louis Daniel Brodsky, who was the collector of our uh, collection of Faulkner materials here on campus. And he held on to this until very recently. It was his favorite item in the collection. He used to keep it on his desk as he wrote. Brodsky's a poet himself. So it was inspirational to him and one of his favorite items. So he just recently, though, decided to include it with the rest of his collection here. Well, what's the, the literary significance of, uh, of this pocket watch? Well, Brodsky himself liked to refer to the watch as Quentin's watch, which is a reference to Faulkner's 1929 novel, The Sound and the Fury. A famous incident in the novel involves the quick character Quentin Compson receiving this watch from his father and subsequently smashing the watch. He's a character who feels trapped by time, wants to escape from time, wants to destroy time. And so to Brodsky, the watch was very reminiscent of Quentin's obsession with time. So he liked to call it that, although we don't have any reason to believe Faulkner thought of it in those terms. <laughs> Tell us a, a little bit about some of these these other items that have come into uh, the possession of the of the Faulkner Center, including a, a, a typewriter. What type of a what type of a typewriter is this, and is this one that, that Faulkner actually wrote on? It is. It was not Faulkner's personal typewriter, but we at the same time we acquired the watch, uh, we also have acquired this typewriter that belonged to one of Faulkner's editors, a man named Sax Cummins. And Faulkner, when he would visit Sax Cummins in Princeton, New Jersey, would often use the typewriter. And we know that, for instance, that Faulkner typed quite a bit of his novel, A Fable, on this typewriter. And how about this? Uh, there's there's a, a letter that was written, not by Faulkner, but by, as I understand, his, uh, his great grandfather's brother? Is that, is, that, is that what it was? That's right. Special Collections and Archives recently acquired a letter separate from these other items. Uh, a Civil War letter that was an interesting piece of history without the Faulkner connection, but we were able to help establish that there was a Faulkner connection to this Civil War letter. It was written by Faulkner's great-grandfather's brother from a POW camp in Ohio during the Civil War, and he wrote back to family members in St. Genevieve, Missouri. So it helps to establish a Faulkner connection to Missouri, which we always knew was there, but it, it helps to have some documentation of the family's time in St. Genevieve. Uh, how, did the, how did the university end up with this collection of, of Faulkner materials in the first place? The collection was acquired by the university in 1989, donated by Louis Daniel Brodsky. He was the collector. He collected the materials himself over a long period of time. Uh, there's four big collections of Faulkner materials that exist in the country, or in the world for that matter. Uh, Old Miss in Faulkner's hometown has one. University of Virginia, where Faulkner was artist in residence for a few years, has another. University of Texas has a third, and Southeast Missouri State has the other. All of the collections are strong in some areas, weak in others, so they're all equally comparable in terms of strengths. Um, Brodsky worked with Dr. Hamlin, the founding director of the Faulkner Center here at Southeast, for years cataloging what he had in his collection. And as a result of their partnership, uh, Brodsky eventually donated the collection to the university. And next year will be the 25th year anniversary of the Center for Faulkner Studies. Now, who is Mr. Brodsky? Because he's, a, he's an artist in his, in his own right. He is. He's a poet. He's published m many volumes of poetry himself. He's a Missouri writer. 
as well as a book collector. Uh, he's from the St. Louis area, and he's been involved heavily with helping organize and curate the Faulkner collection uh, even after he has donated it to the university. Well, the, uh, the Faulkner Center in Southeast Missouri State University over the years have hosted a lot of uh, many Chinese and, and Japanese scholars who have, who have come to, to Southeast to, to study the Faulkner Center. Um, how, did, how did this relationship begin and what's the, uh, what's the significance of an author like William Faulkner in a place like, uh, like, like, like China or, or Japan? Faulkner seems to be very popular in Japan and China these days. Uh, I think some of our Chinese scholars, and, and this semester, this year, we have five visiting Chinese scholars who study Faulkner with us and use our collection for research. They seem to find universal themes in Faulkner's work that resonate with Chinese readers, especially, I think, the rural-urban divide speaks strongly to a lot of Chinese readers and scholars. The Japanese scholar program that we have here is sponsored by BioKiowa Corporation, a Japanese company that has a plant here in Cape Girardeau, and they are generous to support us bringing over a visiting scholar once a year who stays for typically about two weeks and does research in our collections and presents a public lecture. And he just finished his stay here for this year and we're look, we work with the Japanese Faulkner Society to bring one in each year. Well, we just have about a, a minute left or so, Chris, but uh, are there any upcoming events or, or, or anything like that coming up in the next year or so at the, uh, at the Faulkner Center? The biggest event we're planning for right now is our next biannual conference, which will be in October 23rd to 25th of 2014. We always pair Faulkner with another writer and this time we'll be pairing Faulkner and Zora Neale Hurston, who is an African-American female author. So we feel that pairing these two authors together is going to be great for stimulating a lot of interesting presentations and conversations among scholars. We typically get scholars from all over the country and four or five foreign countries for each conference. We've been talking today with Chris Rieger. He's the director of the Faulkner Center at Southeast Missouri State University. Chris, thank you so much for talking with us. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us today on Cape Chronicle. The show is a collaboration between the, Par the Department of Mass Media at Southeast Missouri State University, the City of Cape Girardeau, and KRCU, the public radio station for Southeast Missouri. Our executive producer is Jim Dufek. I'm Jacob McClelland. Thanks for watching.